Hey guys, welcome back to The Overseers. My name's Proelios and I'm going to be your sole host for this episode. Nightwing is currently indisposed, he won't be joining us. But uh, we've still got a little bit to talk about, so I think I can just um, do a quick little episode with you guys. Won't take up too much of your time. Uh, but essentially, uh, we have uh, one main piece of news that we are going to talk about, which is the Hero Pool announcements for the Countdown Cup. Uh, so, like... As we discussed in last week's episode, uh, Platchat got the honor of kind of determining the heroes that were going to be banned for the Countdown Cup, and they did it through uh, multiple games of marbles. So they used like the the hero weightages, uh, like based on the Overwatch League stats, to determine how many marbles would be controlled by a certain hero, and then they just played accordingly. Um, and at the end of it. We came out with four bands, uh, which are Sigma, Echo, Ash, and Lucio. So it's quite uh, interesting, these bands, because they ban out, or kind of nerf different kinds of compositions in the game. So not having Sigma means you cannot play the Orisa Sigma Double Shield, you cannot play the Rhine Sigma Double Shield Rush. Um, so essentially, like, you don't have your classic Double Shield off tank, right? Uh, you can't also play Ball Sigma, which you generally saw on um, maps where you would require a lot of map control uh, and especially there were a lot of open spaces so you would kind of use sigma shields to block out hit scan sidelines while ball and probably your tracer just took up positions to take out the enemy backline uh, so you won't be seeing that for the countdown cup with uh, with ash gone you lose out on some of the poke uh, especially you they, you actually saw a lot of ash sigma with that like ball composition so there's naturally not going to be that and um, with echo gone again uh, like the, a slight nerf to dive and a slight nerf to poke because she was like quite a popular pick and with lucio gone naturally it's like quite a big blow to death ball compositions which is like rhino based rush comps so we'll talk about like those in a bit but uh, uh, nightwing and i both think because i just spoke to him about this um, we both think that the prevalent meta that's going to form out of these bands is once again uh, a dive composition. So we think Winston and Diva are still going to be really dominant because, um, well, well, they were already quite strong and uh, none of the elements that kind of went into a classic dive composition have been banned out. Like, sure, you don't have an echo, but I think Tracer Sombra like, has been quite a popular DPS duo with dive, so... That's still quite feasible to run. And uh, of, of course, with the hitscan nerfs, uh, we don't think there's going to be nearly as much McCree play. Um, but yeah, Tracer and Echo, do, uh, sorry, Tracer and Sombra don't really suffer that much from those nerfs. So you're still going to see them in play. And I think it's going to be really crucial to have like a good Tracer and a good Sombra on your team if you want to bag those wins. Um, so with Vincent Diva, Tracer, Sombra... Um, and I think a pretty no-brainer backline of Ana Brig because Winston and Ana have turned out to be such a powerful tank support combination. Uh, you saw a lot of this backline like Ana Brig with Double Bubble quite popularly on Gibraltar especially. So I think that's still going to be quite strong. And um, yeah, so I mean it, it does slow down the pace of the game a little bit because... Uh, with this kind of composition, especially with like the Ana Brick backline, you're kind of looking to just uh, poke, farm, alt, and play slow until you get some of these ultimates and then you hard commit. So it's going to be like, I think a lot of uh, alt economy uh, based uh, victories are going to be like, I mean, I just mean to say like teams with better alt economies are going to have better chances in this tournament. Um, just because how important alt cycling is in a composition like Double Bubble or even a Winston Diva dive with Anna Brig. So Nightwing and I both believe this is going to be like the strongest composition. So like Monkey Diva, Anna Brig, Sombra, Tracer. And I, I think you're like, I don't necessarily think teams are going to one-trick it because there are some maps where it's quite counterable by Death Wall compositions or maybe even Orisa Hog as Nightwing said. But um, I think when push comes to shove, if if you want one composition to fall back on, this is going to be the comp of choice for a lot of teams. Uh, 
I think you could sub out the diva for Rosario if the map allows for it and the composition needs that kind of additional mid-range DPS, uh, close to mid-range DPS. So that depends, but essentially, yeah, uh, it's it's going to be again moments in diva. Uh, but yeah, that said, uh, let me just go over some of the some of the games just to give you guys an idea of what to expect from them. Or at least what we think you can expect from them. Um, so, like, I'm just gonna go over like five matches really quickly. So, it, it we can also kind of break down. I mean, I can break down my thoughts on uh, how I think these hero pools are gonna affect some of these teams, and you guys will also maybe start to form an idea of your own about what this meta could possibly turn out to be. So the first match we want to talk about is from the APAC region, which is the Hangzhou Spark versus the Seoul Dynasty. Now, uh, I feel like this match is going to be quite close because these teams have been on similar footing. Um, they've like not been top tier, but they've also not been like one of the weaker teams. Somewhere like around the mid table of APAC. Uh, I think in this match, Spark is going to win it out. Like... Because I feel like almost everyone on the Spark edges out their counterparts on the Dynasty, at least in this meta. Uh, like, I, I feel like Gushua has been performing better than Gesture, uh, or even Marvel, honestly, on the Winston. Uh, they've got Bernard, who's been quite consistent compared to Tuyu, who I feel kind of feeds a little bit these days. Uh, and I think MCD and IDK have been a really solid backline. Uh, and although Creative and Anamo have been quite good as well, I think they're just not at that level yet. Um, I feel like the only kind of saving grace Dynasty has is Prophet's Tracer because I'm quite confident he's gonna outplay Shy. Uh, like, Shy is of course a mechanical god, so he can still, um, like, fight a tough battle with Prophet, but ultimately I think expertise counts a little bit more than just mechanics, so Prophet's gonna win that matchup out. Uh, but still, yeah, overall I think Spark will play a better dive comp than Soul. Um... Moving over to another match, which is actually in the NA region. Uh, let's talk about Boston Uprising versus the Paris Eternal. So, I feel like uh, this match is going to have like a lot of different opinions about it. Uh, I feel like the Paris Eternal are actually in a better better place to win. Um, I feel like Boston, like although it's a good team, I think it's fairly inconsistent at this point. Uh, and, um, I mean, I feel like some of the heroes that are going to be part of this meta uh like favor the eternal in terms of this matchup because you're gonna have let's say diva in the hero pool which vestol has proven to be great at you've got ana which khan is absolutely amazing at and oni god stacer at least i think is quite good uh and they are probably gonna outplay their counterparts on the boston uprising on these heroes not to say boston is bad but yeah i think it it leans towards paris I feel like uh, Stand 1 will definitely outplay down on the Winston. Um, and I think the Sombra matchup is quite even because neither team really plays a ton of Sombra. Um, so, I mean, it, it kind of cancels out that whole aspect of this meta. But I'm going to be interested to see what they pull out instead of Sombra in case they actually opt out of it instead of like trying to play more of it. Like, we have seen um, uh, players like Naga and, uh, if I'm not wrong, even Valentine has picked up Sombra a little bit. Uh, but um, they're not really Sombra players, so it remains to be seen what they play. Mm. Next, let's talk about Fuel versus the Shock, because this is going to be another match which is going to be a fan favorite, in my opinion. Uh, the last time these two teams met was uh, during... I believe, um, the June Joust. And at that time, the Shock had uh, pulled off a surprising victory against the Dallas Fuel. But at least it was like a surprise for me because I did not expect that. Um, I feel like over time, I've grown to... Um, how do you say it? Like, the, the SF Shock are no longer on that pedestal for me. Like, they are not a top-tier team anymore. Uh, whereas the Dallas Fuel have shown a ton of promise. So... On paper, even though it seems like a decent meta for the Shock, uh, I think it's not going to be enough to beat the Dallas Fuel. 
for whom this seems like one of the best metas possible. Uh, I mean, with Winston still in play, I think Fearless is going to have a really good time. Uh, like, I think especially on, like, similar to the, um, to the, to the Spark versus Dynasty matchup, I think almost all hero head-to-heads lean in favor of the fuel, uh, except for Tracer, which is kind of up in the air a little bit, because I think Glister on a good day can beat Sparkle with ease on the Tracer, but Sparkle has also proven to be quite consistent on the hero, and Glister has been a bit streaky, so... Um, other than that, though, I think the fuel still wins out in all of the matchups. Like, you look at Winston, although Smurf is an excellent Winston, I feel like Fearless has shown some really MVP worthy performances on him. Uh, Choi Hyobin, again, a really good diva, but I think Hanbin's probably been the best. Uh, on Ana, it's Twilight versus Fielder, which is a really hard matchup once again. So you can see it's like it's quite close, but it still leans in favor of the fuel, in my opinion. Uh, once again, um, I feel like uh, uh, the Shock don't really have a really good Sombra player at the moment. And Doha's expertise on Sombra could mean that the Fuel just uh, manage all of those EMP fights a whole lot better or even those like simple hack-based engages. So I feel like... I I don't necessarily think this is going to be close, essentially. I think Fuel can 3 or Shock over here. Um, Alright, moving on to... Back to APAC for one game, which is Spark versus the Fusion. Um, I think even though the Spark aren't insanely more skilled than the Fusion, they are definitely more consistent. Like, I think Fusion definitely has the pieces to win this series, but they've had the pieces to win a whole lot of series this season, and they just haven't been working out so far. So, I I also think Fusion has an inherent Sombra problem, which could be make, uh, make or break in this meta. Because the Spark have recently kind of started playing Somensu on the Sombra and he's been looking quite good. So, um, once again, I think a matchup that heavily leans towards Spark winning. Uh, and the final match that I just wanted to address was Gladiators versus the Justice. Now, the last time these two teams faced off, I think 90% of us at least thought that the Gladiators would take it, but the Justice ended up winning by one map. And uh, I feel like that could be the case once again in this matchup because I think like it, it's it's really close right I, I think Justice have a better Winston a better Tracer a better Sombra that's essentially Mag beating Muse uh, DK beating uh, either Bertrand or Kevster and uh, Assassin beating basically any Sombra player that the Gladiators have because they just don't know how to play Sombra well and the Gladiators on the other hand I feel have a better Diva Ana and Brig so space has been looking really solid, better than Fury in my opinion. Um, Shu has been phenomenal, and uh, Skewer is the best brig in the league at the moment. I don't think there's any debate about that. So I think that's why this matchup will be really fun to watch. Uh, it could probably be the matchup of the week if uh, Spark versus Dynasty doesn't get too interesting. Uh, but I think this. The Justice vs. Gladiators match is going to be determined by the Sombra play. Um, if uh, if the Gladiators opt into that Sombra matchup, I think they're going to get absolutely rolled because there's no way Birdring um, or Mirror are going to be as good as Assassin on the Sombra. Maybe if they put Kevster, there could be some hope, but I don't really know at the moment because they've not preferred putting Kevster on Sombra. So, hmm. Um... It's it's honestly a very hard match to call because I think Glads are a more potent team still, but if they struggle with that Sombra matchup once again, it could be disastrous. Like I I think they should just avoid playing the hero and play like to like counter dive comps instead, because I think there's still potential to play a death ball comp because we have seen death ball with Brig instead of Lucio being played uh, by teams that like so so essentially when you play against a dive and you don't want to do a dive mirror you can play a death ball and play really close and the speed boost isn't that significant because when you're playing against dive there's not a whole lot you have to you have to kite right you just kind of absorb the damage sustain through it because you're playing so close together and um, that's why you don't necessarily need a lucio i i 
almost always prefer running Lucio on death wall, but I think you could get away with the brig in this scenario. Uh, so it remains to be seen. I do think some of these teams are going to opt into death balls without Lucio, naturally because there's no Lucio in the pool. Uh, so we will be seeing more brig in those cases. Uh, I think in 2020, we had seen a similar kind of uh, meta where Reaper Torb actually became quite quite dominant. So I remember teams playing Ryan Diva with Reaper Torb and then Anna Brig. So maybe we could see a more uh, kind of mutated version of that here. But yeah, it remains to be seen. But yeah, I think that's all I want to really go over, guys. Our meta predictions are pretty clean. We feel like this Vincent D. Barnabrick Sombra Tracer composition is going to be quite prevalent. And we think, like at least Nightwing thinks, teams might experiment even with Roadhog, uh, who is quite a good anti dive tool. So we'll see. Uh, we will be back next week with like our usual episode format, uh, with Nightwing also sharing his thoughts and us doing like a nice news roundup of the week. So until then, I hope you guys are having a good week and uh, staying safe. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.